Hello and welcome to my advanced ZBrush podcast. For this podcast, I'm not going to have my usual uh, text thing on my screen, so I'm not going to be able to uh, draw on the screen because that really gets in the way of the program I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using ZBrush, this little one right here. I'm not going to go into anything really intense when it comes to ZBrush. I just want to do some fundamentals and allow you to draw your own conclusions when it comes to the program. But I will go over some of the menus you'll need to know. Not all of them, though. The first menu you're going to need to know is Tool. And once you click a menu, you notice there's this little button up here. And if you click it, it docks it on your sidebar. You are going to need that very much. It makes everything a lot easier. So you have your subtools if you just scroll through. And these are mostly basic shapes and in some cases special brushes. Those I'm not going to be getting into. But I will get into little shapes and stuff. Now with Maya what you do is you export as an OBJ and then you will import what you exported as a block out into this program. And since I really don't want to use any of what they give me, I'm going to use my own. So I'm going to go to my folder, let's see, where's my PMA2, here we go. Uh, da, 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 it's an OBJ, hmm, there it is, I went to the wrong folder. I found all three files. Now, I already have some stuff in here as you can see, I have cliff, cliff, pillar, I'm going to teach you all with a pillar. Now I modeled this in Maya and as you can see it's a very small model. You just draw it on. If you hold shift you can go anywhere on the screen and just zoom it in. Now once I have it zoomed in I'm going to press T and that will take me to my tool. If I just click the screen it's going to rotate the object for me which is good but I can always click shift and drag down to get it fixed. Do not click on the object when you do that. Shift is smooth in ZBrush. Oh darn it. I messed up. <sighs> sometimes ZBrush likes to be a little finicky, so sometimes you really do have to fight with it. I'm just going to import my tool again. <clears throat> so, to move, you're going to hold Alt, click, and drag off the model. You can frame up your model by pressing F. And then from there, I like to give it a three-quarters view so I know what I'm looking at. Now over here on the side, we have what's called polyframe. And it's going to tell me how many polygons are in this. Of course, up at the top up here, you can see active points. Now 82 is not enough to sculpt on. So we're going to go to the Geometry tab under your Tool Presets, turn off Smooth, and we're going to divide. And you can see the points going up. And divide turn polyframe off and back on again so you can see the difference. Hmm. Divide. 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 Uh, 81,000 points is quite a bit, but not enough. I'm going to turn smoothing back on. Divide. And divide. That gives me 1,310,000 points. Now, Maya will never be able to take that many points. But it's okay. We're not looking to use this in Maya. We're going to decimate it. So over on this side, we have our brush types. I'm going to select freehand. And then I'm going to go to my clay tubes. Now your intensity up here is going to tell how intense your uh, stroke is, your draw size. And I'm going to Z sub, which means subtract. And with this, I'm going to start carving away at the edges. Actually, first, I'm going to go to layers, new layer, name it, edges. And I'm going to make a concrete pillar. So, I want to get as close as I can without getting too close. Lower my draw size, up my intensity, and start chipping away at this. And for the tutorial, I'm going to turn off polyframe. And I want to be quick about this. It has to look, it doesn't, you don't want it to look half assed, but you don't want it to look forced either. So, keep destroying the edges. They don't all have to be destroyed but you're going to want to do something that makes it look like it's weathered, especially if it's concrete. And of course, you know, it's not only going to be the edges that are going to be destroyed when it comes to concrete. There's going to be grout, 
and there's going to be texture but that's all texture that's not something we have to add just add it like that do that I'm not going to do all the edges on this because it's not required and I want this to be a fairly short tutorial so I'm going to go to this side and I'm using a Wacom tablet which is pressure it's pressure sensitive inside of ZBrush so I'm just going to beat these walls up a little I'm going to add more intensity because I don't feel like breaking my screen I'm just going to zigzag a little bit tear them up it doesn't have to look perfect like I said but you do want there to be some weathering now if you wanted to go back and destroy one of the uh, sides of this like let's say just carve out a huge indentation you could but when you take it back into Maya you have to modify the base geometry first before you bake your texture <laughs> otherwise it's going to look bad because this is a high-res model we're not going to be using this this mesh in Maya just the texture from it basically what you're doing is making a texture for yourself without finding one on the internet and I've always liked this method better so you can see it looks a little beat up not the best but not too bad I'm gonna frame it up and I'm gonna rotate a little bit if it'll let me there we go and now I'm gonna make a new layer name it I'm gonna call this detail keep it on Z subtract Z intensity I can lower that if I need to looks good to me I'm gonna go to my alpha now your alpha tells your brush shape <clears throat> there's a bunch of alphas you can choose from but I'm going to go with the alpha 40 which is a tiny dot and then go to spray in Photoshop you'll find you have different brushes this is the same spray just make some dots on here lower my alpha or lower my intensity and you notice they all look a little wonky when I zoom out. That's because it's at an angle. If you use a brush at an angle, it's definitely going to show up at an angle. Up my brush size a little bit. And just continue beating it up. That's all I'm doing here is beating this thing up. No, it's also looking a little wonky probably because I'm streaming at the same time. Yeah, that's definitely why so it'll look better if you do it yourself there you go just add some bumps add some grout and that's your concrete texture now if you look over here with your layers you can lower the slider and it'll lower the amount that's done to it so if you find you've done too much that's an easy way to fix it now after all of this is done you're gonna have to go get a, a plugin called decimation master if you want to take it back to Maya well, actually, not yet. There's still a few things I'd like to show you. I'm going to go back to freehand, go back to my regular alpha, which is 28, and I'm going to hold down shift. Now, when I. Oh, I've got to turn my layer back on. Now, when I hold down shift and drag, it's going to smooth. This is good for organic models. You can smooth out harsh lines, and while holding down the button you can go up to the top and adjust your intensity too it's a different intensity it changes so let's just say I wanted to smooth some of this out and that gives it more of like a wooden texture on the front if you can see that honestly any way that works for you is fine whatever works for you to get the effect you want just make a little design on the front smooth out the edges That's really how you do it. Now to save this, you can go up to the top, Tool, Save As, and it'll save as a Z tool. For Maya, when you want to take it back into Maya, you're going to go to Z Plugin, and there's one called Decimation Master. If you don't have Decimation Master, then you're going to want to go get it. I believe it's free. Now you're going to pre-process your current model, analyzing the mesh, it's going to process all the polygons on here and it's going to decide what you need and what you don't need for a high-res model in Maya 
because <clears throat> you can't bring 1.3 million polys into the other program. Now, once it's processed, you can take the slider, a percentage. You can slide it up or down. And I'm going to have it decimated around 45% because there's not really much on here. Actually, I'll go up to 58. And if you zoom into one of your more detailed areas of your model, if it'll let me, <laughs> I'm looking here. I'm going to decimate. Yes, transfer high resolution details to the modified mesh. Now you'll see there's 766,000 active points. I'm going to lower this, decimate current. Now there's 452,000. That's still a lot. I'm going to go to 14%, and I'm going to keep going down until I start seeing my detail being removed. Let's see, 7%. There's not really that much here. 92,000, 5%, 46,000. And I'm starting to see a loss of detail here. So I'm going to stick with this. And then you can save your Z tool as a decimated version so you can come back and fix it. Or you can just go to export and export your pillar as an OBJ or a Maya file. I tend to export mine as OBJs. That way it's easier to keep up with. Now when you now you're gonna exit ZBrush. I don't have to save because I'm not going to save. I already have the decimated version. I'm gonna open up Maya. Uh, I'm not gonna open my old scene because it's not worth the trouble right now. BMA2, and I don't have enough RAM actually right now. So this is my pillar decimated. I'm going to bring it right into the scene. Whenever it decides to load, it is a pretty big file. At least I think it. Come on. Where are you? <laughs> Maya is a little bit piggy sometimes. So. Okay, it doesn't want to bring in my thing. So I'm going to import another one. Come on. Or maybe it's... Oh, there it is. <sighs> this is why it's good to put your pivots on origin. I just made a huge mistake. So, my pivot's on origin. My item is not. So What I'm going to do is bring this back over towards origin. And origin is the zero, zero point on your grid. It's pretty important to keep your models on origin when you're modeling outside of a program, so something like that does not happen. I'm just going to click it, edit, uh, da -da -da -da. modify, center pivot. There we go, and that'll move the pivot back to where it needs to go. That's close enough for me. Now, can't really see it with the wireframe on it, so I'm going to turn the wireframe off. This was supposed to be a wooden pillar. And as you can see, a lot of the detail was eaten up by ZBrush. And I had the regular model on another file. It was basically a cube with extrusions. But what you're going to do is... Uh, actually, I'll just open the other scene. I'm pretty sure my computer can handle it right now. Don't save. You're going to go into what's called Decimation Master. And Decimation Master is going to project all these polygons onto another object that looks like it. Yeah, this is the scene. You're going to have to give me a minute here because it's loading a lot of stuff. And you can see where those pillars went. I have not textured them yet, unfortunately, though. And the same thing with the rocks. The rocks are going to be what it looks like right out of Decimation Master. But you can see the lines on the uh, geometry. They don't look like there's all that much on them. And then here's my block out. So, I'm not going to save this. So I'm just going to move this out. This was one of my pillars. I'm going to grab my high resolution pillar. 
I'm going to move this one over top of the other one. And I'm just going to show you Decimation Master real quick. I'm not going to do the ambient inclusion or anything. I'm just going to do this. Actually, yeah, I didn't keep my mid resist, did I? No, I did not. I'm going to move one of these out. And I'm going to rebake it. So ignore how it looks. It's supposed to be a regular Lambert. Looks like it's fully inside of the model. So I'm going to go to light rendering, texturing, no wait, lighting and shading, transfer maps. I'm going to select the low res first, add selected, mesh. I'm going to make it an envelope so it knows where to go. And I want the source mesh to be mesh inside of this. So add selected. I'm going to make a normal map. I'm going to name it test map. Move it on my desktop. I want to save it as Ataria. I want to make it a new shader. I want it 1024 by 1024. And bake and close. Now this takes a minute. Um, you're going to have to do this three times. One with a normal map, one with an ambient occlusion map. And then after that you'll have your shaders and everything that you'll need. So you can take them into Photoshop and make your own. I'm going to turn off my high-res pillar. And it looks like it did not bake. Huh. Oh wait, yes it did. Down here in my hyper shade, I'll probably find it. Yep. Move it onto my model. It's not seeming to want to go. So I'll have to fix that. I'm going to go to color. I didn't do an ambient occlusion map, so I'm just going to plug my normal map into this which is the one I just did and yes it baked and that's really how you get a uh, texture onto an object without eating up all your CPU and having a whole bunch of different things in it um, one thing about the normal maps you've probably never seen one before so I'm going to close Maya Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. I'm looking for it. Give me a second. I'm kind of blind. I can't find Targa. There we go. This is a Targa. Um. I know Windows. Stop bothering me. Open with. In front of you. So, what a Targa does is these are my. This is my UV layout for my pillars. This tells where everything is going to go. The pink tells where everything is pushed back. The purple tells where everything is pushed back. The blue tells where everything is shadowed. And then the green tells where things, is, things are pushed up. Usually the green will be on the top, the pink will be on the sides, the blue will be on the backs. And that gives Maya a good idea of where to shade. So if you're going to do anything in Maya, make sure you have your object softened or hardened how you want it before you generate your normal maps. Otherwise, they're not going to come out right. That's pretty much how to do that in Maya and ZBrush. It, it's the same process for almost everything. You're just going to want to make sure that your base mesh block out has about the same proportions as the one you import into ZBrush. And that way you can just modify from there. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I can also do another video just to show you what to do if you have a specific question. Thank you. Bye.